Okay folks, 8.3 equation of a line in 3 space. So now we're going to look at lines in 3 space. First and foremost, if you're given a particular point, A1, A2, A3, and you're given the direction vector of that particular line, M1, M2, M3, what you can do with that direction vector is find the vector equation of the line and that's the same method that we used when we found the equation of the vector in R2 now we're finding it in R3 so 3 space and what happens here is that a vector equation of a line in 3 space means that you have three variables to worry about and this is again of a line so there's only one parameter we have to worry about and that will be t and the parametric equation looks very similar to the way we did for vector equation and then we also have the symmetric equation of the line and that is again the similar method that we used in two space that we use for three space so these three forms are very similar to what you've just learned now let's look at an example you're asked for example one you're asked to state the equation of the line that passes through a point and has a direction vector of the following okay and you're just asked to state the equation of a line so the vector equation of the line if you're asked that would be xyz equals 1 0 1 plus t times 1 2 3 the parametric equation would be x equals 1 plus t 2t, y equals 2t, and z equals 3t minus 1. The symmetric equation would be x minus 1 equals y divided by 2, which equals z plus 1 all over 3. So these are the three different forms the equation line could be asked for. Next part. Example number 2. Does the point lie on the line in example one. So does that point lie on the line? The easiest way to figure that out is to check that particular point in the symmetric equation because if I plug it into the symmetric equation the t value should be the same regardless of which one you plug it in and you notice that it isn't necessarily true so looking here, just going to focus a little bit here, if I plugged in 3 for x, 4 for y, 2 for z, I notice that these two will be the same. But when I plug it into here, I get 2 plus 1 is 3, divided by 3 gives us 1. So unfortunately, 2 equals 2 equal, uh, cannot equal 1. So therefore, it doesn't have the same t value, same parameter. Because it doesn't have the same parameter, 3, 4, 2 cannot lie on that particular line. Let's look at another example, example 3. You're asked to state the parametric, vector, and symmetric equations of the line that passes through a point and another point. What are you supposed to do here? Well, hopefully you're thinking, okay, I need one point to be my stabilizing point and find the direction vector from A to B. So for my direction vector from A to B is going to be 3, negative 4, 7. A is my fixed point. The vector equation is going to be x, y, z is equal to 2, 4, 0 plus t times the direction vector. Then the parametric equation is the isolated forms of x, y, and z. And finally, the symmetric equations will be as follows. And it's pretty straightforward how to find these equations. Don't forget though folks, if you're given points like you were in the beginning, you make sure you find the direction vector that makes those points. 
All right. Part B of that question says, does the point negative 4, 12, negative 14 lie on that line? Okay, and part C says, find the coordinates of another point on the line. So it's important to note that when you do this, folks, is to be able to know how to do this for anyone. So does the point lie on the line? What you do is you check. You're going to sub the point into the, you can use for x, y, and z, you're going to sub it into the symmetric equation. And when you plug it in, the t value should be the same. The parameters should be the same. When you plug it in, just as we did here, what will all of these equal? So negative 4 minus 2 over 3 gives us negative 6 over 3, which is negative 2. 12 minus 4 is 8, divided by negative 4 is negative 2. Negative 14 over 7 is negative 2. So all of these equal negative 2. Because they all equal the same parameter, you can say, therefore, that the point does lie on the line. So it is on the line. Now, if you're asked to find the coordinate of another point on the line, you can just sub in any t value. Sub in any t value and plug in the t value of 1. So we're going to actually change that for a second. We're going to change that just a little bit. And we're going to sub the t value to be, oh, well, let's say, um, let's make it 5. We're always using such small numbers. Let's make it 5. You can make it any number you want it to be, but in this case, we're going to make it 5. So what will our x value be? Well, it's going to be x will equal, all right, here we go, 2 and 2, whoops, sorry, folks, let's just write that carefully, 2 plus 3 times the number that we just did, which is 5. What is 2 plus 3 times 5? That will equal, that's right, that will equal 17. Now, our y value is going to equal the following. y is equal to negative, uh, sorry, 4 minus 4 times t. What's t? t is 5. Okay, and that will equal 4 minus 20 is negative 16. And our last one, z, is equal to, all right, 7t. So 7 times t. What's our t value? That's 5. So what will our z value be? That z value will be 35. So our point on the line, again, we chose any t value. So this time we chose t is equal to 5. We found out another point. So therefore, the point is, what is another point? Well, that will be another point. on the line is 17, negative 16, and 35. That is another point on that line. All right, let's move in, moving forwards. There's a part D to the same question. And you're asked to state the point where the line intersects the xz plane. So we need to know when the line intersects the xz plane. Well, let's look at a drawing. This there, this that you see here, that is your xz plane. This here is your xz plane. 
and we want to know the point at where the line intersects the xz plane. So we have a vector equation of the line, and that's what this is. We have a parametric equation of that line, and that's as follows. Oops, careful, we're missing one there. We'll just go backwards for a sec, we're missing one. Somehow z disappeared. Okay, and we have our symmetric equations. And what we can do with this is if we sub in y equals 0. Now why do we sub in y equals 0? Note that any point that is in this particular plane here, the x will have a value, the z will have a value, but y must be 0. It cannot go off of the, it cannot go anywhere to the right or left of, with the y value. So it must stay on the xz plane. So y must equal 0. If I plug in y equals 0, this y equals 0 that you have here, into this equation right here, that will, or we can sub in our y equals 0 into this equation right here, we'll be able to find the t value. The t value is going to equal 1. If the t value is 1, that forces, that says that the rest of the equation has to have a t value of 1. So you can plug in the t value of 1 into the parametric equations to find the values. And that is for x, y, and z, funny enough for us, the values when t is equal to 1 will be 5, 0, and 7. So what this turns out to be 5, 0, 7, that turns out to be the point on the line that intersects the xz plane. Don't forget again that the y value is 0 because it intersects the xz plane. If it was one of the other planes, xy plane, then z would be 0. yz plane, that means x would be 0. So again, it depends on when it intersects the certain plane. Alright, last example. Example number four. State the equations of the line that passes through 6, 0, negative 1 half and is parallel to the z-axis. What does that mean? Well, I have my x, y, z, and I need it parallel to the x, z axis. So we're going to sub our point and a direction vector that looks like that. To be parallel to z-axis, we need to figure out one vector that is on, par uh, on the z-axis. So 0, 0, 1 would be a point. And what we do is we're going to sub the point and the direction vector 0, 0, 1 because it's parallel to the z-axis and find the values. So the vector equation and the parametric equation and the symmetric equation we cannot do because it does not exist, because conveniently for us, our y is equal to 0. So the vector equation is going to be, again, the point plus t times the direction vector. The parametric equation is, this, is the is single variable is isolated. The symmetric equation does not exist because we have a 0 here in the y value. So that's and that zero indicates that we won't be able to make it into a fraction. All right, folks, that's the end of this video. This section, have a numerical day. Take care.